This is a film about identity and accepting what I look like in a world of unrealistic beauty standards. Hola, Nathy. As I'm getting older, I've noticed that I'm starting to lose my hair. What? Yeah. So, this is that story. This might not make a whole lot of sense to a lot of you. Um, that's okay. I'm doing this for me as a way to sort of deal with an inner demon. This is an insecurity of mine that I have lost far too much mental energy on, uh, and I just want to move on with my life. You might see me as having a full head of hair, um, but my hairline is very much receding. I see my hair thinning, I see more and more of my hairs falling out in the shower, and with the genetics that I've got, the amount of bald men in my family, I know that at some point in my life, probably in the not so far future, I am going to be bald. Let me give a little bit of context as to why I'm doing this. I just ran my hands through my hair for just, you know, the last 60 seconds, and uh, that's a lot of hair that has come out. I started to notice my hairline receding a little over a year ago. At first, to be honest with you, it was a complete shock. I guess I never thought I would start losing my hair this early on in my life. I just figured it would happen maybe in my 30s or 40s or later on in life. To be honest, I have not always had the most positive self-image, and this quickly sparked fears that go a little bit deeper than just losing dead skin cells from the top of my head. It has more to do with uh, being seen as unattractive, especially by the other sex, by women, and uh, maybe a fear of ending up alone or not being desirable. I guess it sounds a little bit vain to say some of these things, but it's true. And it also represents this sort of slow, inevitable approach of death. I know these are really heavy topics that I'm invoking here. I want this to ultimately be a fun video in a sense, because I don't want to take myself so seriously, but I'm just being honest about where I'm coming from here. This has been a heavy topic for me. Now, over the course of the last year, especially during periods where I've had, quite frankly, too much time with my own thoughts, I have become a little bit obsessive on this subject. In a sense, it's the first time in my life where nature is happening in such a way that I cannot control. And I have this sort of personality of being action-oriented, solution-oriented, of wanting to fix problems as they arise. And this is something that I can't really fix. And so, as such, I feel like I've gone into these very exhausting sort of cyclical worrying cycles of ruminations. I want to become free of this insecurity. Welcome to my bathroom. The moment of truth has arrived. I'm enlisting the help of my friend, Ricky. I'm nervous for you a little bit. I was doing totally fine until this morning. And since this morning, my heart has been pounding out of my chest. I need to just do this. I need to demystify this. The time has come. I know I'm not the only one. I know that there are millions of men around the world that struggle with this as well. This is 1500s peasant. Especially the one curl on the side. Yeah, I live in Germany in 1612. This is looking good though. Like, I mean... No. This is looking good. I'm lacking the materials to do this properly. This is looking god awful so far. Oh my god, all right, continue. Let's go. You're placing the hair on my shoulder? <laughs> I know there are solutions out there and they are improving with time, but still, as of today, uh, all solutions out there have their drawbacks. Most of them are either expensive or painful, and sometimes there are negative side effects like permanent impotence that sort of represent a, a very high price to pay, a price that I'm not willing to pay. Rino so you just want to leave this section here? Yeah. That's Ronaldo from the World Cup. This is... <laughs> Probably the worst haircut I've gotten ever in my life. I would never shame any man for getting surgery or looking into or taking any of these potential solutions. And who knows, maybe I will down the road. It's hard to say, things can change. But I'm coming at all of this from a different angle. I don't even want to consider this a problem in the first place. Um, I don't want to feel like I have to fix something about myself. I don't want to go through life feeling like I'm hiding I don't want to apologize for who I am. 
I don't want to conform to somebody else's idea of what I should look like. I'm not interested in doing any of those things. Wow. <laughs> Tan line alert. So it's been a day. I gave myself 24 hours to sort of reflect on things, take some time to myself. Either we did not do a super good job shaving or it has started growing very quickly because I feel like it has already grown since yesterday. It's getting darker up here. To be completely honest, this was liberating for me. I definitely feel a weight lifted. Um, I feel like it really was not anywhere near as big a deal as I thought in my head. I feel really good about having done this instead of letting the thoughts in my head keep going and keep going and feeding themselves. So what I'm going to do now is call some friends and family to get their reactions on my new cut. I'm going to start with my mom. <laughs> what do you think? What do you think? What do I think? Well, you look great. You have the most gorgeous eyes. Thanks. Oh my lord. <laughs> wow. What do you think? Oh my goodness. Kind of cool. I, what the fuck? <laughs> oh my god. Um, no way! <laughs> Are you kidding me? I feel like a camera I have for this ball. Yeah, yeah, are you kidding me? Yeah, no, no hiding the bald head. Just, <laughs> just, <laughs> I'm sick of worrying about it. I got so sick of worrying about it. Honestly, it was nowhere near as big a deal as I thought. I feel pretty decent about it, honestly. Je voulais juste te dire que tu m'as inspiré. Voilà. Okay, so it has been a couple of weeks now and the look is starting to grow on me. Uh, my conclusions are that this whole experiment, this whole challenge that I put myself through has helped me go from worrying about this a lot to not worrying about it very much anymore. Like, I'm over it. Facing it like this made me realize that it's not a big deal. I just needed to see it to demystify this. And now I feel like I can move on. I can grow my hair back out and enjoy it while I've got it. But when I lose it, which is, is going to happen again because of my DNA, it is what it is. Like, and this is, this is a look that I can live with. It turns out people don't really care what's on my head. Um, and talk is cheap. Some people told me that I look like I just got out of prison. And some people told me I look like a psychologist. Like, everybody's gonna have an opinion and that's just life. What matters is that I feel good about how I look and I can go back to more important things like learning about and enjoying life as much as I possibly can while I'm here. What did I do to deserve this? I can't, I honestly can't really believe this country. Absolutely nobody here. It doesn't matter how you look, own it baby. Life is short. When life gives you lemons, make that lemonade. This video is sponsored by Audible, which I always say is probably my favorite app on my phone. Right now, I'm listening to How to Avoid a Climate Disaster by the one and only Bill Gates. I'm listening to this because it's a topic that I think about a lot, that I worry about a lot. I'm finding it quite refreshing as it seeks to be as pragmatic and clear as possible on a subject that I think most of us find quite confusing and overwhelming. I think it's an important audiobook as it contributes to what I think is an important conversation, which is how are we going to go about curbing our environmentally destructive way of living life. Bill Gates does a great job of creating a roadmap on the things that we need to think about, the things that we need to be talking about, the questions that we should be asking. This is a topic that is really important to me. I don't have the answers, but I'm, I'm trying to learn as much as I possibly can, and Audible is helping me do that. Audible is the leading provider of spoken word entertainment all in one place. I like listening to audiobooks before I go to bed. Uh, since it's audio, I don't have to be looking at a screen before I go to sleep, and I think that's probably healthier. You can start listening now with a 30-day Audible trial. Choose one audiobook and get full access to the Plus catalog absolutely free. Visit audible.com slash Nathaniel Drew or text Nathaniel Drew to 500-500. The link, as always, is going to be in the description. So, check it out. Thank you to Audible for sponsoring this video, and thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys soon. That tan line is not going away. Thank you.